and you got to remember, tape is actually, it wasn't really actually a thing. Until Fair point. The, Fair probably, point. I hadn't really considered that, yeah. So, yeah, like they didn't have sticky stuff to stick stuff together. So here, Andrew, is, this is one of my small pipe chanters. I don't know how well you can see that I've got a bunch of tape on there. Check out this piece right here. Can, oh, you can't quite see. Can you see how gooey it is around the edges of the yeah. tape? It's slippery, yeah. man. It'll slide up and down. Here's, um, I recently put a new reed into my elevation chanter here. So I only have one piece of tape. High G, of course, because tape always goes mm -hmm. on high G. This is something new I've never tried before. I took my tape and I wrapped it continuously around the bottom of the chanter so I can rip off pieces as I need them. I more often do something like this where I just cover the non-hole parts of the chanter in pieces of tape so when I need them I can grab them and stick them on. Here's the thing. I don't know if I'm using the best kind of tape. I've used electrical tape, I've used car detailing tape on Swan's suggestion and it seemed good. This is gaff tape. I think maybe gaff tape's my favorite, I'm not sure. So what kind of tape do you use? And also, do you find, I feel like I almost think it's advantageous to have a little bit of slippery tape on my high A. When I'm playing funerals and the sun comes out, I might be halfway through Amazing Grace and I actually need to use my thumb to adjust my tuning up or down. And then if the tape is a little bit slippery, I can do it. You're shaking your head. <laughs> you look like you're trying to hold back. Are, did you just throw open your mouth a little bit? I think that maybe is a what I just bit. saw. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, then talk to me about your feelings, Andrew. Tell me all about all this. Right. Let's, start off, let's start off with the important thing, which is, uh, is tape good? Mm. Should you be using chanter tape? And the answer is a resounding yes, definitely. Real pipers use tape. Because there's like, you know, a, there's an attitude out there which I can sort of like, I, I can sympathize with, which is like, I just spent like 200 bucks on this chanter. What the hell do you mean I need to put chanter tape on it? Oh, uh, yeah. Right? I mean, I'd love to and, not need it. That'd be awesome. Right. And then like, you know, and then Uncle Frank, he doesn't use any of that stupid tape. No, no, no. We use tape. It, it was a huge thing. Um, uh, there was a cool article in Piping Press dot com or whatever uh rab wallace's site is and he he talked to, he talked a little bit about like how that came about uh and it sounds like donald it sounds like donald mcleod donald mcpherson like some of the really heavy hitting solo pipers uh you know in the 1950s and onward you know they started experimenting with chanter tape and <laughs> and it like represented a quantum leap forward in the quality of bagpipe tuning like and people sound. didn't use it at all before then Correct. And they would do, you know, before tape, right? And you got to remember, tape is actually, it wasn't really actually a thing. Until Fair point. The, Fair probably, point. I hadn't really 19, considered 50, that, yeah. So. Yeah, like they didn't have sticky stuff to stick stuff together yeah. until like basically until the uh, industrial revolution was like long underway, I suppose. I don't really know. Yeah. But, uh, um, but yeah, before that, they would use like wax, beeswax and stuff if they needed to edit a hole. And that was a very cumbersome process yeah it was probably not super reliable i would i would guess that wax would just you know randomly fall out of stuff and ruin all your efforts and this that and the other thing so you know before tape there was really no there was really nothing besides like you know maybe wax or something mm -hmm. yeah there, so it does occur to me that there's that i forget what they call them with illum pipes and stuff they, they'll use like sticks and put them up the chanter to flatten tones to like close yeah, up, to like close stuff yeah. up. But that also, I think, is pretty cumbersome. It's a pretty, pretty challenging. Yeah. Long... And alien pipes are totally, 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 totally different than Highland pipes uh, when we're talking about the category of tuning, right? Yeah. Totally, maybe totally, that's totally, a... totally, 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 totally different. Yeah. Yeah. Those those right? things might actually be a cylinder chanter, not a conical chanter thing, anyway. So. Right. But alien pipes don't have the same problem that bagpipes have, right? So the bagpipes undergo constant internal bag atmosphere air mixture changes, right? Mm -hmm. Temperature, humidity, all that is constantly in flux. That is simply not true for any bellows blown instrument, right? So, so like, I'm not saying alien pipes don't have tuning challenges. Of course they do, but it's nothing like the way that a bagpipe is going to change over time as you play. There's no such thing in the history of bagpipes not, there's never been a single performance on a bagpipe where the tuning has not changed mm. regularly throughout that performance. It's yeah. just a fact. It's just a thing. You might think you've heard it, 
but you haven't heard it, right? You may have heard like a particularly stable period of time where the, the way that it's changed has been very imperceptible. Yeah, but, the change has been minimal, you know, that, but it's still there. And that's actually pretty rare. So the Pipers, our tuning is changing all the time. Yeah. Therefore, we want to have a quick, okay, that's a key thing. Don't overlook that. We want to have quick, we want to have easy, and we want to have fine-tune ability. We want to have that all mixed together, and tape is the answer, right? So we can quickly change the tuning of any note without stopping our pipes, if we have to, using tape, okay? It's a miraculous thing. It's absolutely awesome. We definitely want to do it, mm -hmm. okay? Everybody out there? We, and the reason why is because the tuning of the, the, the chanter and of those notes is always changing on us, and it's never going to stop changing. I can't stress this enough, right? And so, you know, uh, and some of that change can be managed by just retuning the drones, but sometimes the actual balance of the notes, right? Sometimes the B is going to be flatter when you finish than when you started, right? And, and for high stakes performances, we want that fine tunability. So no shame okay. in taping. That's established. Definitely we, go no ahead shame. And tape. Yeah. The tape, uh, tape is 0% shame, 100% potential glory. Hmm. Uh, now you can, there's lots of ways to do tape wrong. Okay. So, uh, and we'll get to that. The next thing is, uh, so now that we've got that out of the way, the next thing I will say is there is no such thing as tape that, uh, lasts forever. And, uh, and there's no such thing. And if there is, uh, that person could make tens of dollars in the bagpipe industry <laughs> uh, or could make hundreds right uh, but it's just not a thing we have tape that we like at the dojo that we recommend it's called we call it super tape you can get it at henderson group's website that they uh, now that we don't do supplies anymore they they will ship that out for you highly recommend it but it's not perfect yeah and it'll get sticky and um, and there's downsides in Verary, when i play in the band they have like the one type of tape that everyone in the band must use mm -hmm. And it's the one that they like. Um, and, and there's, you know, do you, can you double wrap it or si should you single wrap it? Like everybody has their own preference and that's all fine. The important thing to understand about tape is that it, sorry, I'm, I, I temporarily lost my train of thought. The important <laughs> thing to remember about tape is that it's not, it's not going to last forever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So about, about two weeks before any important performance, I will always completely refresh the tape. That's, that's how I deal with that problem. When you do that, what is the most efficient way that you've found to get the goo off of your chanter from the old tape before putting new tape on? Yeah, so uh, bore oil is the old-fashioned way. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have some bore oil, you can use that and just, you know, uh, wiping the chanter off uh, will eventually get all the stickies out. Uh, and then goo gone is another way. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I love goo gone, but uh, it's good. It's called Goo Gone. I've got a bottle of it up right over there. Yeah. You ever toss a but, poly uh, chanter in the dishwasher? Um, no. I did once. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, the dishwasher gets extremely, extremely hot. Yeah. A lot of people don't recognize, like, just how hot it gets in there. So I wouldn't feel that comfortable. But, like, I don't know. Yeah. My chanter came out looking, like, kind of cloudy and dusty for the rest of eternity. Yeah. So it's I probably don't, the heat. I probably it's shouldn't probably have done it. Yeah. I, I definitely regretted it afterward. <laughs> yeah. Yep, exactly. And then, you know, yeah, bore oil. I think that's the safest way. So Just that's get some clean. of that, put it up. And yeah. then you put new, clean. you put, put your new tape on. Yeah, like and like so you do the bore oil, you get it clean, and then you take a dry paper towel mm. uh, and just try and you just try to extract as much of that as much sort of standing oil off the channel as you can cuz you don't want to put tape on top of a big oily thing cuz that, you know, it's not going to hold long. It'll it'll get slippery on you. So um Unless you want but your then, tape then to you be put slippery. Then you put the fresh, fresh tape. What's that? Unless you want your tape Which to be slippery. Which you do slippery. not. No. <laughs> let's just, well, that's a topic for another podcast, but let's just get our pipes set up properly and we shouldn't have to worry about that. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So, uh, and then, okay. So that's tape. Okay. It is going to get sticky. So my, what my tip for everyone out there is just accept the fact that two weeks before your important performance, you're going to replace the tape. Here's a good tip of how to do that. In the old days, I used to draw a diagram of the tape configuration of my chanter on a piece of paper. Mm. That way you can just take all the, uh, all the tape off, get rid of the sticky stuff, and you have a really good idea of exactly where to replace the tape. Uh, but nowadays, it's way easier. I just use my smartphone, 
and I just take a picture of the tape configuration. There you go. Right? And that, and that makes it easy to just totally replace the tape. There's other ideas too, but I love the smartphone technique. Yeah, I haven't tried it, but just not long ago, I saw Kyle Howie was redoing one of his chanters and he showed what he would do is he'd take a piece of tape and line it up with what was already there and then take off the yeah. old one and then put a yeah. new one, which I think could yeah. work if I didn't need to also wipe the thing down, right? If it's so gooey, right. I need to wipe it down then. Correct. Yeah. And then yeah. for me, that takes, for, I, I understand it. I get it. It's going to work. For me, it's like, it takes way too long. Mm -hmm. I need, if I'm going to change the tape, it needs to happen fast because that's my personality style. Mm -hmm. By the way, this was supposed to be a short episode. We're going to fail, but that's okay. <laughs> so, the, uh, so there you go, uh, you know, replacing the tape. Next bit of, next thing I definitely do, yeah. okay? Because you were saying, you're showing me like, oh, I can keep a bunch of tape extra yeah. tape down at the bottom of the chanter. That's all good. Yeah, I got a but another thing I do is every hole on my chanter gets a piece of tape. Oh, period. and you every, just set it above or below kind of thing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so if it's not needed on the hole, it'll just be there wrapped mm -hmm. right above the hole. Uh, and it's ready for me to use at a moment's notice. I always know it's there if I need it, period. End of story. Mm -hmm. Done. Right? That way I'm never short of tape. I always have a piece if I need it. I'm not wondering where to get it. I don't have to go on my sporn and it's always just there and it can always be done really quickly. And, and then, like you do, I keep extra pieces down on the bell of the chanter in case one piece gets slippery, like you know that pesky high A hole or whatever, mm -hmm. or the high G because you have to change the tape on the high G so often perhaps, right? which isn't so much true for me anymore um, now that I know, now that I've sort of learned the art of calibrate or not calibration of acclimatization and stuff like that mm. but uh and then but if i do need to replace a piece it's always there right and i'm always just prepared and ready to go and i would highly recommend that uh for everybody to do that um, and it's good to get used to playing with that tape there as well sure. you know it's, it feels ever so slightly different so why not just play that way all the time during my brief stints as pipe major with groups, I have, out of habit, uh, covered not just the bell of my chanter with extra tape, but also my entire blowpipe all the way up and down, just because mm. you figure it shouldn't it's be not necessary. just me. My other, the other pipers in the circle, you know, I might have to run over and put a piece on there and put a piece on there, you know, just have it ready. Right. <laughs> yep, that should not be necessary. So in any pipe band uh, I instruct, or if I was pipe major, I would teach everyone like this is how we do it. Mm. Uh, or better yet, you know, I would be handing chanters out to people anyway, and I would get the tape set up the way I wanted mm -hmm. ahead of time anyway. You know, but uh, but yeah, it shouldn't be necessary to do any of that if you just uh, set the tape, de you know, as a default on there. Mm. Um, and that, you know, that's my tip for people, uh, and just kind of go for it. I got more. You want more? I I can take it. it yeah, give me more if you want to give more. It, All right. A couple of other tips. Would you say a couple you got of other some tips. tape tips? I got a couple more tape tips. Mm -hmm. uh, next, next tip mm -hmm. uh, is put a little bit of tape on the bottom hand notes, low G through D. Mm -hmm. Okay. Put a little bit of tape before you even put your read in. A little bit of tape on those notes. We kind of want that. And we want to balance the chanter with a little bit of tape already on those notes if you possibly can. Because believe it or not, those are the notes that are going to change the most in tuning over time as you play. And so it's very handy to be able to go either direction with that tape uh, from moment one. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, I see. Just a little tape tip. Not, not a lot of tape. Like I'm talking like uh, maybe an eighth of an inch of tape on each of those notes for starters. So then you can go up as well tip. as down if you need to. Yeah. That's a great the bottom tape hand tip. tends to, especially if you're playing in a colder climate, the pitch of the bottom hand tends to drop on you yes. uh, as you play. And the, nothing is worse than being in final tuning with your pipe band and your bottom hand's flat, but you got no tape. Yeah, where, where do you go? Right. If your high hand is flat or sharp, that's super easy to fix yeah. just by raising or sinking the reed, but it's way harder to fix on the bottom hand. So just a little tape tip. Next tape tip, okay? If any hole on the chanter uh, is more than one quarter covered, okay, you should try and fix that problem uh, using a non-tape method uh, next time you get the chance. You might not, if you're in final tuning, don't do it right then. But next time, you're, you, next time you have a chance, no hole should have more than one quarter taped with the possible exception of the high G. I was just going to say. <laughs> but even the high G, if, if you get anywhere close 
to more than a third covered of the high G, yeah. you must find another solution because we that high G is going to go way lower in volume the more tape you put on, yeah. and you're going to get way, 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 way more likely to get squeaks and chirps the more tape is on that high G from those G grace notes yeah. not being able to fire correctly. So like absolutely no chance that high G's got more than a third covered. Uh, yeah. And if, if it does, you want to change that as soon as reasonably possible. That's, and I don't know, I've always blamed altitude to some degree for this, but like I'm looking yes, at this. Yes, altitude my, does make it way harder. My, my chanter right now like has no tape on anything except the high G, which is maybe more than half covered right now. <laughs> so, yes, exactly. Yeah. What we would want to do there is raise the reed, mm -hmm. right? You definitely want to raise the reed there in that case and get that high G, uh, you know, rich and resonant more naturally than that. Like at altitude, you're probably still going to end up with a quarter covered, but a half is a non-starter. Mm -hmm. And then what you might find is that results in your high A being really flat. Uh, and if you find that in order to get a good high G, your high G has to, your high A rather, mm -hmm. ends up wicked flat. If you find that that's true every single solitary time, it might be a good idea to reach out to an advanced bagpipe sound expert and explore the possibility of carving the high A out a little bit uh, you don't, to give you more. You don't think I should just grab my Dremel and start start going at it? I would not advise that for beginners and intermediates. Yeah, uh, unless you got money to blow. Tongue in cheek. Unless you, you got money to blow, and you're and it, you know you have to be mentally prepared to trash that chanter. Yeah. But if you're mentally prepared, by all means, experiment. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, um, but uh, it just. If everything's going great and going well and you're blowing steady and the moisture is good and you're getting a good tone otherwise, but you just can't seem to shake that flat high A, um, that might, it might be time to explore mm. a little drillage, especially higher altitudes or dry climates. You know, uh, it tends to be uh, uh, something. Yeah. But I think that basically sums up my tape tips there, Jim. So thing number one is tape is definitely good. It's, you know, tape is like a, a miraculous development for bagpipers of all ages and stages and interests. Uh, and then thing number two is it's going to get sticky eventually no matter what you do. So just get in a regular habit of totally replacing it um, and, and develop your thing. And then thing number three is if tape ever gets beyond a moderate amount on any hole, you want to fix that as soon as reasonably possible with other tuning methods. Oh, yeah, and thing four is just put tape above every hole. Oh, right? yeah. Thing yeah. four, put tape above every hole so it's there ready for you. Oh, yeah, and one more, just kidding, <laughs> I don't have any more, that's it. All right, there you go. Beautiful. Uh, tape, tape tips. Tape tips.